All right, YouTube, Hillary Clinton is laughing all the way to the bank, knowing full well that Russia had nothing to do with her electoral laws. That being said, she's not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. You've got what we have here is a situation where the Washington Post, one single second tier legacy media outlet, extremely far left, um, literally in bed with Clinton, according to all accounts from WikiLeaks, has taken it upon themselves to take the words of the night janitor at the CIA's annex seriously and publish, you know, anonymously given tips and information from them to make it look like Vladimir Putin was involved with the U.S. election somehow. Now, it hasn't escaped my notice that the same people ranting loud and long about Russian involvement, Russian hacking, Russian uh, usurping of our uh, democracy or whatever, are the same people who claimed before the election that the election could not be hacked, could not be stolen, that it was impossible for that to ever take place. Now all of a sudden they think that it's not only likely that that happened, but oh, it's definite because the CIA says so. The head of the CIA hasn't said so. Other intelligence agencies, the FBI now has come out and said, yeah, we agree it was probably, it was Russia all the way down. I don't think so. I don't think it had anything to do with Russia at all. You know what I think is happening is Obama and Clinton are pulling strings to try to lessen the long-term damage to the Democratic Party and indeed to globalism in general by trying to denigrate Trump's popularity, to force him to repeatedly contravene intelligence agencies, making him continue to look like he's nuts. That way the independents will continue to think that he's nuts. I don't think any of them have the illusion that they're actually going to deny Trump the presidency because there's really nothing that they can do about that. If Obama were to actually suggest seriously to the American people that inauguration should be pushed back, that the electoral vote should be pushed back to late January or something, or that the election results are nullified because a foreign power was involved or whatever it happened to be, if that actually happened, all of those Tea Partiers, a lot of who are like Cruzite Never Trumpers, would immediately support him they would take up arms, they would refuse to acknowledge that. A lot of independents would. Even a slim majority of Democrats probably would. They would see that as an attempt to take over the United States government by a group that had not been voted into power. And I don't think that they're dumb enough to do that. I know a lot of people very early on, they said, oh, Obama third term, Obama will suspend the election because he's the Antichrist. It's not going to happen. Trump will be the next president of the United States. Nobody's crazy enough to try that. If they were, they wouldn't prevail anyway. Um, that being said, I, I think they're doing this primarily to cause problems for Trump's inevitable presidency. Now, it just makes sense that they would. Uh, Clinton doesn't want to be the one to have to take the responsibility for running a piss-poor campaign. Look at it this way. Russia was not required. Very early on, when Trump was still considered an outside shot by most analysts, there were some of us who realized what he was beginning to do realized he had gained an advantage, was probably the nominee, and then would go on, if he was nominated, to probably win the presidency. No Russia required. No hacking required. No foreign influence required. The only foreign influence we know was peddled at all was pay to play within Clinton's State Department involving money from Saudi Arabia and places like that. Or in even Russia, oddly enough. Clinton comes out and says, oh, Putin has a personal beef with me. Of course he influenced the election. No, he didn't. Not one shred of proof, not one shred of evidence has been given for this claim. Until evidence is given, I'll dismiss it, and everybody else should dismiss it too. It should be considered a null claim. It should be considered stupid. A conspiracy theory, actually. That's the funniest part. The CIA and the FBI right now are peddling a conspiracy theory using the dying media that was bought off by Clinton in the first place to spread the mythology that Vladimir Putin was inordinately upset at the possibility that someone who oversaw the sale of 20% of the U.S. uranium to Russia in exchange for a $1 million donation and a half million dollar Bill Clinton speaking slot in Moscow, that he decided to literally start fucking around in the U.S. election. Do you think he's that crazy? I don't. I think this is Red Scare bullshit. I can blame Russia for many things in this world, but fiddling around with the U.S. election is not one of them. When I see that the CIA, of all groups, is the progenitor of this, and that they won't name sources, they can't give out any of the evidence because it's top secret, well, then why would I trust them? 
What would be the reason to trust them? What, you suddenly? It's very funny. Suddenly, all of these people are self-proclaimed liberals. They're like, you know, pot smoking. You know, they were tinfoil hat wearers around the zeitgeist era saying, oh, Bush did 9-11. Now, all of a sudden, they say, sit down, shut up, and listen to the government of all things. Very, very funny to see this happen. Uh, no, they're not going to deny Trump the presidency, but they are trying to denigrate his mandate, uh, probably because they're, you know, globalist backers, various corporations and banks that didn't fund Trump and are the ones that are actually concerned right now, they're telling him to do this. They're pulling a few strings to uh, set a few traps in Trump's way. I don't think that they'll prevail. I think people are gonna wise up to what's going on around the time that the CIA still hasn't produced evidence on Inauguration Day. And then Trump's gonna get in there, say, hmm, what were you people doing and who told you to do it? I think he could come out at any time and sort of name the culprits. Oh yeah, Hillary Clinton is obviously using her fiscal ties to some of these people to try to denigrate me. Well, we'll have an investigation to this in a few weeks, people, so don't worry about it too much. We'll put uh, crooked Hillary behind bars for good. And he should go back to doing that. Uh, they're perturbing him enough at this point, so uh, it's kind of uh, iffy as to whether he holds to the, oh, I was just joking about putting Hillary Clinton in jail line. But these people are obviously concerned. This is a fairly obvious lie. Russia did not influence our election. Um, Russia is too busy right now fucking around in Crimea, you know, Ukrainian territory, by the way. Whether you admit it or not, it is. They're too busy doing that or screwing around trying to barter with the Chinese and sometimes making headway there through bricks and sometimes failing completely. They're too busy doing that to care. Well, I'm supposed to believe that Russia has the singular and anomalous hacking capability to completely take down the they get a spam filter supposedly on republican servers keeps them out and yet they gain access to the dnc to john podesta to hillary clinton's personal emails to human abedin's emails everything else under the sun none of these people had a spam filter really it was all a phishing attempt that's not even hacking it's a phishing exploit yes i'm sure that that's the method by which the kgb conducts business this makes perfect and complete sense. No, it doesn't. It sounds like literally a 400 pound man was responsible for this. I think what they don't want to admit is that Seth Rich or Rice or whichever name it was, or some other DNC insider is the one that gave this to WikiLeaks. And WikiLeaks is doing the same thing, challenging them. Hey, if you have evidence, release it. Fucking morons. You can supposedly prove this to the American people that it was big bad Russia that not only gave us WikiLeaks all of these files, it was them who did the hacking in the first place. They're sitting back and having a chuckle. Now, you know what? I am going to trust WikiLeaks before I trust the CIA on such a topic because it's fairly obvious at this point a large proportion of our media and indeed those inside the government have been compromised. Now, the Russians have been compromised, you know, forever anyway, too. I don't think that Vladimir Putin uh, would look out for the best interest of the U.S. public. Indeed, if he wanted to fuck the United States, all he would have to do is rig the game in favor of Hillary Clinton, believe it or not. It would have caused a lot more social alienation. It would have allowed the same corrupt, tired, old establishment figures to keep running the show into the ground along with our economy would have made us weaker not stronger it would have made the united states less of an adversary on the world stage her comments of course about china and about nato aside uh, i i it's weird because somebody who in the state department secured so much u.s uranium for russia is suddenly so inordinately worried that they're going to nuke us off the map this is red scare 101 american politicians don't want the public to realize how corrupt they are, so they deflect and start talking about some other corrupt regime around the world. Well, no shit, the Russian government is corrupt. So is the Venezuelan government. So is the UK's government. So is the French government. They're all corrupt. The only ones that you never see blamed are the Swiss or the Icelandic and sometimes, you know, Canada or Australia or New Zealand or something. Some of these other, you know, extremely literate, but ultimately largely meaningless countries on the face of the earth that have relatively little actual power, UK aside, of course. Um, no, they're all corrupt, but that doesn't mean our so-called representatives aren't as well. 
They don't want to, they simply don't want to talk about the content of the emails showing all of their corruption. They want the public to believe they shouldn't read the WikiLeaks emails because it's more Russia. You shouldn't read the, these leaked reports. The CNN comes out, oh, it's illegal for you to read them, which is a lie. The intelligence agencies come out and say, yeah, Russia submitted them, which as far as I understand is a lie. Hillary Clinton and all these others say, we're not going to talk about them because they were stolen, which is ultimately a lie if it has anything related to a phishing attempt intruding into your systems or somebody guessing the the password which was obama 08 on some of those dnc servers you honestly think that the kgb had to be involved for that shit to get cracked it could have been any randomly selected democratic mole working for the republicans any randomly selected <laughs> libertarian who wanted to keep you accountable it could have been any randomly selected Republican that infiltrated your ranks. It could have been any other random person under the sun who simply did a little bit of guesswork for 10 minutes. That's all it would have required. You morons had nothing to do with Russia. If it did, let them offer evidence. Saying, oh, it's top secret, we can't tell you little peons how we know the Russians were involved, that's not going to cut it. If you're really that concerned about it, then you should release the evidence anyway. Otherwise, I'm going to assume you're either not that concerned, in which case I don't give a fuck, or there is no evidence and your claim isn't even real, in which case you're obviously corrupt and you're doing something behind the scenes. So why would I care? And the media is going to keep pushing it because it's a hot button issue and they know they can get uh, all the views like clickbait. That's the only reason they're even talking about it. Hillary Clinton's not going to be elected. The electors will choose Trump. He's the next president of the United States. It is inevitable. There's nothing that's going to stop it now. It's just not going to happen. Uh, I find it funny that all of these people, even a lot of young, you know, people around my age, you know, mid, late 20s or so, they're talking like it's uh, the Red Scare era and they're, they're like going full Liberty Prime mode or whatever. Yes, that's really fun to joke about. It's really fun to think about. Yes, we will crush the communists or whatever. We will, we will become empire. Okay, that's great. But that doesn't mean that every time our government does something shitty, some foreign power had to be involved with espionage for us to know that that happened. Snowden wasn't an espionage agent. They tried to cast him one off uh, as one too. Oh, he's a Chinese agent, they said when he went to what it was Hong Kong or what. Oh, he's a Russian agent, they said when he fled to Russia. No, it's because he was avoiding extradition. It's self-explanatory. He didn't want to rot in a gulag for the rest of his life. And that's the reason why he went over there. I wonder why he didn't just go to Canada. Oh, that pesky extradition treaty. Oh, if only we didn't have one of those. Maybe he would have gone there instead. And he'd be getting drunk off of maple liquor right now instead of vodka. But of course, he's not at leisure to do that. Julian Assange locked away in his embassy for years and years and years, despite the fact that there's not a single crime that he committed. This is how they make these people suffer for trying to keep governments accountable. They didn't seem to hate WikiLeaks or think they were Russian agents when WikiLeaks was talking about Bush's problems in the Iraq war. They didn't seem to think that when they were talking about the Russian government's corruption, now did they? People so soon forget that they publish stuff on all the governments of the world whenever they get a hold of it. They've published stuff on China and Russia and their government members insofar as they involve themselves with stuff like G20 or whatever it happens to be. But everybody wants to ignore that simple fact because they'd rather titillate themselves with this lurid depiction of this heinous arch enemy Russia, which is no longer the USSR and is, you know, uh, just a little more than half the size that it was when it uh, was sort of a, a communist empire, has a lot less power, a lot less manpower, a lot smaller of uh, an economy, a rusting, aging military. Oh, but yeah, they're still, they're still commies over there. They're responsible for everything. No, the government's responsible for being corrupt. If our government's corrupt, it's their responsibility. This is the perennial problem. I'm not terrified of Russia. Russia doesn't pass laws under which we have to live under. If there's a nuclear war, so be it. There's a nuclear war. I wish our nation well in wiping them off the face of the earth. By they, I mean whoever the uh, adversary is, Russia, China, both of them, whoever it happens to be. 
But right now, there's no shooting war. There's just a vague claim being made by the CIA and Hillary Clinton that Russia was interfering in our elections. If it's that damn concerning, if you think that a foreign state flipped our election, give us the evidence that shows you it's the case and consider declaring war or consider charging Trump with treason. If you think that he knew about this and you can prove it, the American people will be receptive, but you're too fucking stupid to do that. You can't even manufacture fake evidence fast enough to make such a claim because it never happened. And I'm pretty damn sure that it never happened. So I don't give a fuck. Trump will be the next president of the United States. Putin did not interfere with our election. Plenty of bad things to say about Russia without saying that they did what these same people a month ago claimed was totally impossible to actually pull off. No, oh, there's no voter fraud. There's no electoral fraud. It's impossible to rig an election. Okay, well, now you're saying it was, so which is it? That's about all. Peace out.